Hello, sounds like uh, someone is there. It's Lyndon. <clears throat> Hi, Bill. Lyndon. Hey. Good. Good, good, good. Let's see. Am I videoing? I am videoing. You, you are. I, I don't have a camera. You just have to imagine. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Uh, like Gandalf, but with short hair and glasses. Okay. Hey, Chris. Hi, guys. Chris, hey, I am yeah. so sorry. I had a, a family thing come up, and I had to jump on the phone with uh, with my dad. I'm really sorry about that. Yeah, no, no worries. I, I was just uh, I was uh, wondering if if we messed up the time zones or the the winter no, time, no. but. It's all fine. <laughs> oh, more people. Hello, Hi guys. Mr. Hi. Griffin. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, Griffin boy. Hey. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm going to go get a glass of wine. Hold on. That's a really good idea. I'm going to go do that. Everybody's going now. That's <laughs> nice. Uh, where are you from, um, George? Oh, yeah, from the UK. Ah, okay. So, yep, so just like outside London. Oh, we've got another. So anyways, how are your videos progressing? Yeah, it's, it's um, slowed down a little bit. I actually um, recorded, uh, I think, three videos um, on the C++ nodes, but then I decided to redo them. So I haven't released them yet. The um, Watching them back, um, they were just a bit slow, quite a bit slower than they needed to be. And I know it's tutorial content, and people just want to know how it's done, but... I'd rather the videos be watchable and easy to understand since I'm trying to kind of explain a bit of DSP stuff as well. Mm -hmm. It would, uh, I kind of want it to just be as good as it can be and still hold up. Um, so it'll be out in maybe, maybe a month if I'm, uh, yeah, if I'm being uh, <laughs> realistic. Mm -hmm. um, just lots, lots to do, always, always very busy. What, uh, what are, the, are these videos to do with highs? Uh, yeah, um, looking at C++ nodes, so creating custom script nodes using uh, oh, kind of the well, juice. That... Um, because I, I hit a, a bit of a limit using uh, Snacks. I was using that for a while for my uh, distortions. Um, and I think just the fact that you couldn't use uh, pointers um, was a bit of an issue for me because I was doing kind of a modular architecture. And so you need to better uh, reference arbitrary functions and call them and swap out the functions later um, kind of thing. And so that's mm. why I started looking at C++, but I don't have a background in that. So uh, I'm learning as I go. And so the oh, video's okay. uh, taking a while because I want to get them perfectly correct and as good as they can be, just the best logic mm -hmm. before Feel I teach. me up with, with any C++ questions. I can't help you with the highest part, but the C++, that uh, ah. that I can help you with. Yeah, I might take advantage of that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I also uh, offered you that you you can send me like the drafts or so um, uh, to me if you have it like a, at the stage where you might want some feedback or so. And because often it's like really hard to like be your own critic uh, for this kind of mm. stuff, like hearing yourself talk and so <laughs> this kind of clouds your judgment sometimes a bit. Um, but I, I, I like the pace of your first video. It was actually, I, I didn't find it too slow or anything. Um, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I'll, I'll definitely uh, reach out for some advice uh, yeah. when it's a bit further along. Um, I always yeah. find that with, with the videos I make that um, I, I, I'm always thinking, this is way too slow, this is way too slow. I, you know, that, but that's because I know it, right? But if I'm learning something, then it's sort of like I think, Maybe I, I always think you're going too quick. Slow down, slow down. So like it, you kind of you have this mental state where you understand it really well, but and therefore it seems really 
trivial and not mm -hmm. important, but everybody else is sort of like um, sitting there going, I'm just hanging on by their coattails, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the case of like a lot of uh, stuff in music as well, or anything. Uh, I feel that people, I, I wish there's more good tutorial content. A lot of people kind of learn the difficult skills and then they just go to work and get super busy and they don't teach anyone. Hmm. So it's getting crowded now. Yep, um, getting people. Hello, Dan. Hi. What's happening, hey, guys? Dave. How are you? Hey, Hi, uh, Michael. Nice to meet you. Um, yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, it's great, great, great to see all of you guys. Um, I'm uh, beginning to feel real bad that I don't have a, a camera on my on my machine. <laughs> well, yeah, don't worry. We we all know your face from the Heist website. <laughs> <laughs> I just say uh, to Bill, like, uh, just imagine Gandalf, but with short hair and glasses. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Hello, good. everybody. Hello. Hi. Ah, nice nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm Oli. Hello. Hello, yes, hello. Oli. Dave's got something stuck in his ear. Headphones. Can you hear me? Is my yep. microphone yeah. working? Okay. Yeah, yes. we can hear you. No, it's all right then. All good. Um, okay. Well, let's get started. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Um, should we make like a short round of introduction for everybody where everybody just says who he is, where he's from and what he is doing with his life? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sounds, sounds good. That's deeply philosophical. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe I, I start. Why not? Um, so I, I'm Christoph. I'm the developer of Heise, you probably know. Um, and I'm... Actually, I studied film composing um, and uh, I, some some years ago, I, I started developing this platform that we are now all using, um, which I love. Um, and yeah, so basically that's me. I, I think you, you all know me, so I keep myself short, but um, maybe um, let's start in, in the order where you appear on my screen. So maybe now Josh. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Joshua or Griffin Boy. Um... I also uh, come from film composition, but I'm fairly new to the industry and um, I think software development and creating new tools for the creation of music is really where my interests lie. Um, I feel like a lot of the um, uh, ecosystem with uh, film composition relies on quite a lot of uh, buying expensive sample libraries, kind of relying on a lot of uh, pre-made material. And so a lot of my work is about um, giving people tools to create their own sounds and uh, maybe tools are a little bit easier to understand from uh, the new composers. Uh, but yep, I make experimental, very aggressive electronic music uh, is the cool. actual music that I make. Very I do that cool. for film. Yeah, that's, that's me. Very cool. Good. Nice to meet you. So now it would be uh, Michael. Yeah, sure. So nice to meet you guys all uh, virtually like this for the first time. Yeah, so my name is Michael. I live in Canada, Montreal right now. Uh, I'm studying uh, a master's degree at McGill University in music technology. My focus is more on like instrument design, but I've been, my background's actually in philosophy. Then I swapped to electroacoustics. Uh, so I do a lot of just like weird uh, digital music, sometimes for like film. And uh, yeah, I've been messing around with highs for, I'd say like a year and a half or so and absolutely love it. Nice. And, and the one thing I'd like to say to you, Michael, is everybody here is enormously uh, envious of your chosen tag. for. for yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we'd have thought of Heisenberg, we would have used that. <laughs> I was there, I had to have it. Nice. Uh, so now it would be Bill, uh, the next one. Hi, I'm 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 very shy, but I will I will I will say a few words. Uh, my name is Bill, and I am a audio scientist uh, and music producer and university lecturer in music technology. And I 
uh, use highs um, mainly for audio research. I just completed a five-year project uh, creating the first system that converts uh, audio to MIDI uh, losslessly, allows you to edit the MIDI and then render it again. Uh, and it sounds exactly like it was, except with the changes. And uh, an exciting part of that was predicting the parts of the music that wasn't recorded. Uh, because if you move the notes apart, it has to fill in uh, whatever was there. And I use highs in the research phase, uh, pre-rendering all the different possibilities of how a note could have happened. And then in the DAW, it plays those things back because it, it can't really co uh, compute them in real time. And that's not really the way highs, I think, is supposed to be used. And I sometimes feel like an absolute idiot, which is why you see me on the forum so much being like, you know, how do you print something to the console or something? So I I really appreciate everyone who has answered and put up with my many questions. So thank you. Nice. And nice. Uh, now Dan. Hey guys, hopefully you can hear me. I have no idea, yes. but uh, I am uh, Dan Corneff. Uh, I am in New York. Been, Hi, Dan. Uh, hello. <laughs> been a record producer for, I guess, 25 years now. Got about uh, 30 platinum records, a couple Grammy nods. Uh, you know, so I've moved on from that oh, into uh, programming. <laughs> yeah, I've done a couple of things. That's um, impressive. And uh, so, yeah, so always, always into tinkering with circuits and designing stuff and uh so that like moved into the analog modeling portion uh, where it was just a transfer of using the schematic to make transfer functions and then start making plugins. And uh, I feel like I use highs uh, for probably the, the least amount of resources available um, as it, you know, I'm just using it as the, the framework to, to play my audio and all that stuff. But uh, uh, just like Bill said, like I appreciate everyone on the forum always helpful um always something to contribute um and really help me along so i appreciate you guys nice nice okay and uh, now um oliver yeah hello i'm oli uh, and um my english is not the best so please be patient um i'm also a music composer um for film and commercials and i've done some uh, work for uh, German um, nature documentaries and a lot of work in commercials for uh, a lot of car brands and Nivea and all that stuff. And that's where my, yeah, my big love is still the music, but uh, I always had the dream to uh, make my own software. And now it highs, um, I have the ability to do it. I started a little um, software brand a few years ago and we started with some uh, contact libraries but yeah, now I'm uh, building the first real VST um, synth plugin with highs, and I really have to say that I love it. And uh, the second project I'm using highs for is I'm starting a research project with the university. Um, oh, how's the name? I'm a little bit uh, 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 aufgeregt. I don't know the, the English word. Uh, just of maybe note. Sorry. Excited. Yeah, right. So um, Leuphana University, right? And um, the project is about um, generating music with AI and the audio part will be done with highs. Yeah. Excellent. Nice. Okay, and then the uh, next one would be Linden. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Linden. Uh, I'm uh, a t-shirt marketing guy. <laughs> <laughs> faking it with no actually that's not true uh, i guess i started out as a uh, musician uh as in a band and we got signed and, and it's a long time ago oh. then i ended up as a record oh, producer uh and then <laughs> starved at all of those things and then went to work in telecommunications for a long time uh doing real-time dsp stuff uh, in obscure languages like Erlang for Ericsson and people like that. But um, 
small talk. <laughs> uh, but eventually they upset me so much that I decided I would need to branch out and do my own thing. And I wanted to get back into music. So I started writing contact libraries. And then eventually about, must be, well, I can't remember. My, my memory, I'm getting I'm old now. My, my memory is getting really leaky. I can't remember. It must be like three, maybe four years ago, I started using um, highs. Mm -hmm. Uh, and these days, I um, did only four built... years. Is it more than that? Is it? I don't know. I, can't I think I've known you for like Definitely twenty more. years or something. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> I think maybe not. But anyway, um, so these days I I write I I, I split my time of fifty fifty between writing uh, my own stuff. Uh, in a company called um, Synth Factory. So we have a product uh, with traction called Horizon. Um, and we'll probably have some more products with them soon. But And then if I'm not doing that, then I'm building products for somebody else. So I, um, I, uh, I'm, I'm a gun for hire, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. for highs development. Uh, I don't know anything else to tell you other than that, uh, next time I'll try and buy a camera so you can see me. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, now, uh, Craig, it's your turn. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, right. I, I really, I'm really happy to see you uh, after like so many years on the forum, you know. And uh, so, yeah, my name is Greg, uh, living in France, and um, I have my background is not in music, you know. Um, I, I was an engineer in uh, aeronautic and like electronic stuff and things like that so i like like a lab work you know with oscilloscopes and things like crazy things and um highs has been an opportunity for me when i i i um kept studying music in um in scotland um in glasgow and like it was four years ago five years ago and for being like in music production but unfortunately i had that this time like to go back in france and you know france is famous for cheese but maybe not so much for music so yeah so i started like programming stuff and and yes when 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 i i, I crossed eyes you know it was so simple uh at that time i, I said wow finally it's possible for me to do this and so now yeah it's it's great and i had some difficulties this like these last years so in my life so i you guys have seen me like on the forum sometimes not uh, for a few months and so now i am back in and really this time ready for releasing stuff and so this has begun and i expect the next one for december and so yeah i'm really happy to work with highs and the community is like so great um good luck with that yeah <laughs> It's so nice to finally meet you like uh, yeah i think you are like maybe one of the uh, one of the oldest forum members, apart from David and Linden and Dan. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably back in like 2019, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah, crazy long time. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, now, now, Dave, it would be your turn. Hi, I'm David. Um, I guess you. Uh, I think you? I've met most of you. I think I've had calls with most of you <laughs> one on one. So I, I know most of you guys. Um. I started off uh, with dreams of being a composer, and I still write a bit of music, but then I got sort of swept up creating instruments with contact and doing KSP, and I was heavily into that, and uh, never quite satisfied with it, and then highs came along, and I still wasn't satisfied with it, so I jumped across to highs, and I haven't looked back. Um, so now I really focus on instruments, uh, sampled instruments, uh, orchestral things and acoustic instruments rather than synth based things but i've done some synth stuff as well but that's really where my passion is in making virtual acoustic instruments nice nice to meet you too. your passion was making videos 
<laughs> uh, oh, my passion. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy that as well. I think if you can teach something, um, yeah, you're right. Y- y- you you should. I don't know. I, I don't know if you have an obligation to do it, but it's nice to be able to pass knowledge on to other people. I like sharing things rather than keeping on little secrets to myself. We are really grateful for that. I learned oh a lot, gosh. a lot, a lot uh, from your videos. Beyond, beyond Christoph, the, the second person on this on this call and on the entire forum who's who's most valuable is you, Dave. Oh, thank you. Really is. Yeah, I, I'd be nowhere without. Uh... <laughs> I still I still watch Dave's videos. <laughs> Almost every time I install highs, I go back and read and watch the video again. How do I do this? <laughs> I um, I think Greg is one of the people I'm most grateful for because whenever I have a trigonometry issue, <laughs> it's Greg. <laughs> He's the guy. Yeah, but now with the new CSS thing, you know, trigonomet- tri- trigonometry is like uh, an old thing. <laughs> I saw, yeah. <laughs> All right. I think before we jump into the nerdiness, we need to introduce the last person, Melody. Hey everybody, uh, actually I started uh, using Heist pretty recently, about two, a little more than two years ago. Hi Melody. And you, well, you don't see me much in the forum. I read a lot of what's going on, but more uh, for what I need. Pretty sure I'll start being uh, more active on the forum at some point. Um, but. Yeah, I have a background in uh, music composition, but then uh, always with an, an interest for for coding, but nothing to show for it. So I decided to code uh, a counterpoint a counterpoint generator, basically an AI that g- generates counterpoint out of nothing. Oh, and mm-hmm. surprisingly, I managed it and. Yeah, uh, it led me eventually to join uh, Mantra Instruments, uh, which I think you might have seen Noah posting a bit a couple of times on the forum. Yeah, also Brian is like, huh? uh, Brian also the posts regularly, not like about the technical stuff, but um, if he finds a new toy that he wants to play with. <laughs> which, which company? I, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, Mantra Instruments. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. They're really good. They're, I love their interfaces. Nice, thank you. Uh, I did didn't design it, but I made it basically. Yeah, uh, design, <laughs> build. The design, uh, it was Noah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, hard works in the coding. Huh? The hard works in the coding. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, yes. There's some the magic to do. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And uh, yeah, definitely received a lot of help from david as well like most of you so yeah i'm ever grateful to him <laughs> definitely and uh yeah i guess that's about it nice that's nice and we have a new uh, a new member in the from um dub dub can you hear us hmm. ah, no seeing just lurking around. Oh, he's at the end of the list. Yeah, I see. Oh, huh. I don't see him. He posted on the forum a little while ago to say it was quite late where he is, so he might not get here. But yeah, I, I think he is maybe he's like on a in India or something, and that's uh, right. that's like yeah. the, the the other direction of the time zone where it gets annoying. <laughs> so yeah, it's like five hours ahead or something, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, but maybe he'll join in with some audio. If not, then. Uh, then we don't um, wait any longer. Um, so good that we got the introduction round out of the way. Um, it's really nice to meet you all. It's, it's kind of funny that it took so long uh, to organize that stuff. And also like the, the organization of this was so low key. So basically just uh, let's meet next week. Okay, why not? <laughs> so I like that. So uh, thanks David for that for that uh, thing that sparked this, uh, this conference. Um, so actually, I don't have any roadmap or anything that I want to discuss with you or um, because I'm I would rather like hear from you like feedback um, or maybe we can I can gather some input on where to 
where to prioritize my, my development work over the next month. Um, please don't say bug fixes. Um, oh, can uh, you make the top of the interface extend up? That would be like, that'd be awesome. <laughs> what? what? No, just, bug fixes. Uh, we want bug fixes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I mean, before we, I, before we go like into the uh, like really technical details maybe we go we start with like the more high level stuff um where we think that uh, highs would like uh, need the most work or like where would be the great uh, the greatest thing to put some effort in um so um because actually i i mean i just keep keep talking until i'm interrupted um <laughs> Well, I, I guess I could start for, for me. Um, I feel like machine learning is definitely that's that's the path for so many plugin companies. And it's it's so new. I feel like um, sort of, you know, the nodes already there, but maybe putting a little extra love into it and a little more development into what we can do with uh, machine learning would be great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's there has been some progress actually on the on the RT neural neural front. Um, I'm not sure if you're following this uh, this uh, GitHub issue that I posted with the uh, request for NAM file support. Um, but actually, there there's been some people um, that have started uh, working on this uh, thing. So that's but, great. Let, less work for you to do <laughs> if they can. Take yeah, it yeah. Basically, mm -hmm. it's it's not not my my area of expertise so i'm kind of um depending on on other people to do the work for me here um but uh let let's welcome brian first of all um nice to, to meet you again yeah good to see you all yeah good to see some hi of brian you. hello brian Oh, yeah, so nice. basically you missed the round, introductionary round where everybody talks about himself um for like a few seconds so yeah, i could do my intro so yeah my name is brian i'm a well i've been a professional composer most of my life doing video games uh but yeah we started mantra a few years ago thanks to to dave and christoph and we've been deep in it ever since and we're, uh, yeah, we're busy working away on, on instruments and effects and even doing some other stuff with juice as well. So yeah, keeping busy as, 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 as you, all you do, are doing as well. So <laughs> with bugs as well as, <laughs> with, with the what website. Is, what does your company do? Uh, so we, uh, we started doing mostly video games. Like, uh, I don't know if you've seen like the last couple of Resident Evils, we were doing all the sounds for them for many wow. years. Cool. So the team of Capcom, that's basically how Mantro basically started us doing all their sound sets uh, and also working with Sony with Dreams. We did all their instruments. Uh, and then I, I was like, man, we got to take what we've learned and, and apply it to, to what we, you know, to actually doing products. And um, kind of obsessed here with doing high resolution recording. So we do all our stuff ultrasonically. I spent like years and way too much money on, on on looking here because we've got like a whole setup here with with microphones and we're doing microphone arrays spatial arrays uh doing stuff like even uh, i've got like a like we're using like an eigen mic now with 64 capsules to, to sample spatially uh, all the all the likes of different things and uh yeah we, we it's, it kind of comes naturally to to create an app because we've just been doing this in wise and unreal and and unity all these years so now we're just trying to apply it, and we even have a new uh, plugin that's going to come out called Living Sky, where we have a, a blend of Unity and and Juice going on as well. So uh, Melody is actually the one I'm building that that main application there. Yeah. So yeah, that's a little little resume, and uh, the team's all over the world. I'm in Montreal. I'm in the middle of the woods here in the in my big studio here, and it looks like a big barn from the outside, but it's just full of instruments. I've got over fifteen hundred instruments. And uh, I've got people in Colombia, Venezuela, and India as well. Uh, one, one question, and Unreal is doing the, the graphical side then, or what do you use Unreal for? Uh, actually, we're using Unity. It's going to be a... Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, a sorry, Unity, here. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be a companion app where you are able to control stuff with OSC in, in the plugin itself. So it'll just kind of run on another window, and you'll be able to interact with it and control the, the plugin at the same time. Oh, yeah. sounds nice. Cool. Yeah, so yeah, basically, Brian is the reason why we have OSC support in High. So that was like for for the specific project. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, like, I would pretty much like I've switched to being full time in, in mantra and, and doing this stuff. So uh, yeah, thanks to you, Christoph and, and, and Dave too. Like we, our lives has changed. Like my life has changed dramatically. <laughs> And kind of actually, to be honest, I prefer doing this than composing for people now these days. <laughs> when I got to do a piece with somebody, I was like, oh, here we go again. Whereas like, you know, building something new from scratch is so much more fun. There's also pain involved, as we all know, but but it's it's a good one. <laughs> it's much more mm -hmm. scalable and manageable. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, that's my two cents. I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's really interesting. To me, it's really interesting to hear what what everyone is 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 doing and and it's interesting that everyone who is working at such a high level in the industry i think it, it speaks very uh speaks very well of of highs yeah thank you guys for being so high up in the industry <laughs> does it feel very high <laughs> yeah. No, actually, it's uh, I really like it that, uh, but I also like it that it's like really used by companies who who are commercially successful, but also like from people who are just toying around with it and um, being creative and really starting out with stuff. And um, because actually that, that's how I think that's how everybody of us started. And I've um, actually I've I've seen a, a few companies grown from really one one size. Uh, one uh, one man uh, shops to like a big thing uh, a big thing with uh, multiple developers um, and it's nice to see them to see companies grow and uh, who are using highs and so um it's really really nice to see i mean that was um, that was the main attraction for me was just making it easy you know what i mean like the the entry level into getting a plugin that actually works was so low and uh you know, I thank you, Christoph, and also David for that, because it was the uh, your contact videos that got me into this and you pulled me into highs. And it was yeah. so, so funny that uh, like when I first started, I just I didn't know what I was doing. I had very little programming stuff, but I basically rage quit. I'm like, fuck highs, I'm out. And then like a month later, I'm like, oh, actually, I'm an idiot. This is actually really cool. And this is really easy. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. <laughs> and no, nobody here has done oh, that. This, this is never going to fucking work. Guys, it's rubbish. I'm throwing it away. Marking, oh, shit. Here yeah. I come back. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that's a normal path. <laughs> yeah, but also I like that uh, that Heist acts like kind of like a natural selection for people with like a higher tolerance of frustration because once you made it to the progress, you're a really nice guy. And so, um, because I, <laughs> it's entirely true. Sometimes I, I, I get in, in touch or I get in contact with like end user end users when I'm doing sometimes tech support for some of the projects I'm, uh, I've been working on and like the entitlement and like the, the annoyingness of people who paid money for their, for something is really not something I want to spend my time with. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. I'm really grateful to uh, your kindness. Um, yeah. Oh, nice place. Yeah. No, and... um, I think we have a new, um, a new member, Joao Pedro Ribeiro. Hey guys. Hi. Hey. Um, Hello. Hi. So everyone with the camera and stuff, I have to get mine as well. Uh, Guys, uh, first of all, sorry for my English, because yeah, I'm not really so like I, I don't have a lot of spirits talking, but yeah, I'm gonna try. Uh, should I introduce myself or something? Yeah, please. yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, so uh, let me see. I right right now I study music production in my university. Okay. I'm from Brazil and my, my thesis, right? Like, like the, the end of my course is going to be a project with highs. Uh, I'm doing a accordion. I don't know if you guys know this instrument, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and like, I, I, I did some stuff with contact before, like, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but like basic stuff I can do it. But the thing is, I try to do something that other samplers of accords don't have which is 
it's a technique like you take the, the accordion and like you shake it in like a, a rhythm you know what i mean oh, yeah, cool. and, yeah yeah right so i was like we i we have basically two options to do something like this we can like just get a loop and use a loop or we can like uh try to fake it like doing rep re repetitive notes on round robbies right but the the end result is pretty bad like no no commercial library right now does a good job of these effects the, the bellow shake so my my idea was to have like like kind of like a loop but not the whole chord just a, a specific note right and try to sync it with the doll the doll the bpm right so i i tried a bunch of stuff i, I actually like i <laughs> like a new face right now because I wasn't talking on the forum, but like I tried to study it like more than a year now. And like, basically I got into two, two ideas. The first one was to take a loop and try to, to make uh, slices with it. Right. Like I think Repex does it right with highs, you like you take a loop and you get like tiny pieces of it and try to sync it with the doll, like playing the loops quickly or not, the, the splices. And the other idea was that now we have uh, a good time stretcher algorithm, right? So that my, my tests with it were pretty good. Uh, and the the trouble I, I'm getting right now is like to like get the the MVP of my idea, you know, like mobile product. Uh, like I could get the sync with the doll and stuff. It's pretty easy. It's like straightforward. But what I try to do right now is like, imagine we have like a rhythm, which is like uh, quarter notes on each on each time of the beat, right? Uh, when you are playing like the first note, it's going to start playing, sync it with the, the BPM, okay? But when you get to the second note and you are still holding the, the first one, I wanted it to like, don't start right away. It should start with like a, a clock when the next beat starts, right? So right now I'm messing with uh, uptime, I think. I think that was like the, the the only way I could do these calculations. So like I, I tried to get the uptime and when you play the first note and when you get the second note, it's going to wait to start on the right rhythm, right? And yeah, that's where I am right now. Uh, I I talk a lot, but do you guys think I, I like in the right uh, place, right? Like doing this, or there is a better way? Mm. Well, first of all, it's uh, great to see uh, that Heist is being used in like in a university uh, project. It's actually where I started uh, writing Heist myself when I was doing my bachelor thesis, I, and I was uh, trying to replicate a clarinet. Um, so it's nice to see it going back to the roots. Um, so about your specific technical uh, question, I think you might want to take a look at the transport handler with the script callback um, that you can set to different uh, tempo sections. Um, but um, I think we, we shouldn't like uh, get too much into each uh, specific technical problem because that's w what the forum is super awesome for, but it's really sure. nice, uh, nice to, sure. to, to, me, to meet yeah, you. Yeah, so, I got a little bit too excited <laughs> just start talking. No, no, it's but, perfectly yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah, uh, everything I, good. I, uh, in the, no, no, where is it? Yeah, in the uh, chat, I um, pointed you at the forum topic that is about the transport handler itself and enable the grid. So if you yeah, I, I was I, I was just reading it this today, right? It's a, a new a new like new thing, right? New topic. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, actually, I, I I the 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 first way I tried to do like with the the midi slices, I I do with the transport handler. I basically took the, the snippets of the the synced like arpeggiator and yeah. like yeah. made it work. It's pretty it's pretty straightforward yeah. actually. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, the forum's going to be your friend. Yeah. So, Christoph, you said uh, you suggested that we go around and and talk about uh, what bugs we think should be fit. I mean, what what <laughs> features we should uh, you know, things that we would like. Uh, 
Perhaps we'll do that in the same order as as the intro, and and you call call people out. Mm, yes. Um, why not? Sure. Um, it's funny because you're the first on my my screen now. It somehow reshuffles, so have it. Uh, feel free to start. Okay. Well, I I should start out by saying that I I use highs I think differently from from everyone. So you know the things that. I would want may not be beneficial uh, to other people. My my struggle with um, highs and is that it seems like a lot of things are set up to do a few different types of things, but if you're not doing those types of things, uh, there are a lot of things that are unexpected. But they're not unexpected if you're using it as intended. And I've struggled a lot with things that maybe don't come up for 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 some people like um, the caching, all the different ways that files are cached, uh, and file naming and some of the um, memory handling and and my so my request would be, um, because it's funny, everyone focuses on new features. My thing would be to take a step back and for highs to be a hub to plug other things into. You know, like you know, like if you want to do stuff with AI, like with GANs, how can we plug in existing? Uh, and the other would be to be able to turn off the optimizations. Um, I I will admit I have spent four weeks in my plugin and I can't get a sample map to load. Now that is that is because in my plugin it is always moving the sample map around in different places on on the on the hard drive and and the highs isn't really designed to do that um, and with you've developed all of these these incredible if any of you haven't seen Chris's talk academic talk on highs it's really worth doing because one of the things I learned is that although there are some languages like highs Chris pretty much invented this. And you know this because when he's doing his talk, he talks about how he, you know, came up with 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 everything. And you know, now there's things like Angel Script and all this stuff. Um, but if you could turn off those optimizations uh, and just have things just behave as as more of a general purpose. So if I set a sample map here, nothing is cached. Um, like you talk about in the documentation, uh, performance reasons and stuff, because they would make it. I think one, it would make it easier for people starting out, and two, it would make highs more uh, flexible, where things to be more just sort of general, uh, and for the general purpose to be the default behavior. And then it's like, oh, you know, I pass it a flag, or maybe it's just one thing in um, that says, you know, turn on optimizations or something like that. So that that would be. The problem with this approach would be that people will not turn this on and they won't know that this flag exists and their product. Oh, right. So the other way would be, okay. So um, my um, my approach in this thing is rather I, I let the people run into issues while developing, but um, try to uh, make the most performant option the default. Um, yeah, okay. So, I, I take that back. Other way but I, I, I mean, the question of caching sample maps is, is not really a performance, uh, something about performance, actually. It's more like about uh, the, the, the project management is always a bit consistent. And there, there will be some weird edge cases which, which will slow it down tremendously. Um, and then uh, there will be another Bill Evans at the other end which complains about this. Um, so I have to find some middle ground, and and I I think the way how is it is now regarding sample map caching, I think that's like the like where most people benefit the most from it. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I, I mean I'm always like torn between like going back and fixing and reworking things, uh, which is annoying and sometimes like. Uh, it's like it introduces the danger of breaking backwards compatibility for existing projects, uh, which I need to avoid, obviously. Um, 
but I, I I'm trying to find like a good balance between uh, between like shiny new toys that I want to play around with and like really making the uh, the old stuff uh, work better. Um, can, can, can can I just say something about this backward compatibility um, thing? Yeah, sure. Um, I absolutely understand what you're saying, definitely. But my vote Ooh. would be for you to be less concerned about that. And yeah, I would. I would to, just my not to worry too much about backward compatibility. Yeah, um, more Apple than Microsoft. If you don't work anymore for an old project guess what it just don't work anymore for an old project uh, it, it's an evolving tool uh, and there may be a lot of people who disagree uh, with me but um and you know you may find me at some point in the future if you do that did you do but um but really generally speaking um i i prefer you spend more brain cells and more clock cycles on or less clock cycles on that if you will i think if you do that between major versions uh, that's all right yeah. I, I wouldn't like yeah. to see it within sort of minor versions yeah mm -hmm. sure maybe that's a good compromise that, that, that... yeah yeah but, but i can't think in in versions when i'm developing <laughs> you probably yeah. have noticed um so <laughs> when i'm making a feature it's either breaking existing projects or not so um and this would actually this would like um, oppose more restrictions on my on my versioning system, which is already um, kind of my yeah. my don't do that don't do that my just worst get, character trade. My my vote is for just stick a post on the forum that says, "Guess what? New feature breaks everything. Hard luck. Get used to it. Move on." <laughs> I'm with you, too, but. That's just me. Yeah, the, the the problem I see with this approach is that people will have to be stuck on like the old uh, on like the old highest version. So yeah, yeah. this will like this will lead to people working with like an highest version that is maybe one year or two years old because that's when they started their project. So when they actually encounter a bug that needs to be fixed, and um, they have to backport it somehow, or um, yeah. and then uh, then then stuff gets messy. So unless there's really like like once every two or three months, I, I really noticed like a breaking change that is like um, really it was worse before and I need to fix it, but it will break. It will introduce some subtle changes, then I will do it. But in, uh, in most time, I will add like a preprocessor flag that you can just turn off uh, if you want to keep uh, keep the, uh, the old project working exactly like before. Um, sure. And uh, I mean, and uh, I'm I'm really grateful for Heist uh, that is uh, that it's not yet as big as Contact because uh, they have basically no no place to maneuver whatsoever for making feature new features and stuff. Um, and on the other hand, Heist is starting to be a platform that is used by a few companies, uh, which I have to uh, which I have to acknowledge. So I can't just like do as I please and break stuff. Uh, um, as I go, um, so yeah. it's okay. Um, but but it's like really um, uh, like for my taste, it's uh, like the the ratio between maintaining backwards compatibility and not being like um, not feeling prisoned by like all this technical debt that has stacked up in in the past feels right to me at the moment. But I'm um, I'm happy to hear other feedback or other opinions on this matter. Um, so, but, but, um, otherwise we, we can continue with our, um, with our clock clockwise request for, for a roadmap, uh, points. Uh, so Josh, you would be next. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I'd have many, uh, feature requests. Again, I probably don't use highs in quite the way that most people do. Um, hmm. I, uh, mostly use uh, C++ nodes to kind of circumvent any uh, limitations or issues that I find. Um, I mean, hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing kind it, of... You, uh, you don't have so to invent any, any, any requests if you don't have any. Uh, but I mean, like the feedback that you're working mainly on the C++ part is, is good enough for me so that I can see, okay, somebody's actually using that. Um, I mean, I'm using it too, uh, but uh, 
if, if that's something that I, I think crack and uh, then you guys are also like using that uh, that uh, feature extensively um, yeah yeah definitely uh, I, I, I like the, the C++ thing for developing DSPs uh, essentially uh, because next is like really good for prototyping but it's still mm -hmm. um, not like um, an easy I, I don't mean easy but you know what I mean? Uh, like it's quite limited. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So yeah, basically, so... but it's meant to be like a gateway into like the the, the C plus plus development side and absolutely. Um, yeah. So actually, that's the 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 ability to to use actually C plus plus nodes really relieved a lot of pressure from this next compiler, which at some point um I realized okay, it's it's not really ready for prime time. Um, I mean, I wrote that thing by myself and doing like assembly instruction calculations um, and uh, kind of uh, the uh, like the idea that this could compete with like Clang or something was a little bit gigantomanic from the start. Um, so, but I'm happy to see that it's, it, it's kind of getting some use for like these easy, easy things that you can uh, then transfer onto this onto C++ nodes um, every time. Yeah, yeah, I'm I mean, sure like, next can be. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no, you go first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just want to extend a bit uh, about snacks uh, because, it, like, like I said, it's really good for prototyping, and I think it can be uh, like still improved uh, just for the stability and for like the 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 errors in the the, the mm -hmm. console, uh, uh, like when it's throwing errors, like erratically. You know, it's sometimes. Um, not the best thing, and but it's so good for prototyping because as soon as you make a, you make a modification, you can hear it. You just have to hit compile it, and then you hear it. You don't have to like C plus plus is really good, but but you still have to do more work uh, as soon as you modify just a parameter or just a variable or something. Um, Snacks is so fast for for prototyping, and then you can move on like C plus plus. So I think it it can still be. Uh, improved and and kept like uh, in process, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. Joshua, I, I don't know if you use yourself snacks uh, for prototyping mm -hmm. or are you doing like um, everything in C plus plus yourself? So I started using snacks um, and I was using it for quite a few months, and then when I kind of hit the limitations of not having pointers, uh, yeah, I swapped to C plus plus just just for that feature. And I've, I never really went back so much. I use it sometimes when I want to do very simple things. But uh, I think Snex is kind of um, structured a lot for frame-based processing. Uh, and I, I like to use uh, a lot of the juice structures and also uh, third-party uh, buffer structures, uh, kind of header files. Um, and so I've kind of stuck with the C++ just because, uh, I mean, it might be possible to include other stuff in Snacks. I might have just, uh, I've not really looked into that. I just kind of stuck with the C++, but it's, it's had its own issues. Um, it's, um, I, I guess like a lot of uh, things, it's not super well documented. I mean, um, the, the highest framework, uh, I haven't had a chance to properly... Uh, read like all of the source code and how the uh, uh, script nodes work um, and so a lot of it's guessing in my development and kind of having to piece bits together and uh, so something I would like is uh, more documentation just kind of in general with highs mm -hmm. uh, I mean I know the forum kind of is meant to serve that purpose um, that's kind of tricky because it's not so much of a feature um, but no, no, but, but I, think, uh, I think the thing that slows me down most when I'm working with highs is just trying to figure out uh, the ideal way to do something because, mm -hmm. of course, in programming, there's always going to be lots of different ways to do stuff. But in highs, there's kind of, I feel like there's lots of ways already set up to do stuff uh, in the best way. And I kind of wish uh, it was written down somewhere so you could just always uh, follow best practices, mm. especially with the C++ and the script node. Uh, I've just started like uh, trying to properly understand how the external data works so that I can uh, interface between like the UI of highs and get like audio files in from the user and then work with them inside a script node and it's it's just a bit of a nightmare because uh, no one's quite 
written no one's written loads about about using it yet and there's no snippets that really uh go into it uh, and that might just be just because uh, most people use kind of the high sampler and stuff which would make sense um but i guess that's the issues that i encounter when i'm i'm working yeah guys. you're it joshua you're out of the front on the bleeding edge <laughs> yeah i might be pushing it a bit um sure. yeah but uh yeah, but those those are my thoughts. But I think uh, likely other people have more pressing uh, highs ideas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I mean, the, like the subject of documentation is uh, pretty uh, certainly something that we can talk about later a bit too. Um, it would be like good for me to know which kind of on on which level you would uh, see uh, the information like the documentation to be. Uh, improved like because I, I um I mean I I've did quite a, some work on the in the last years on the documentation front but it's like such a vast topic and such so many different uh, things where so do you need more examples do you need like a really extensive docu complete reference do you need a well documented source code and um, uh, there's like like different directions where where I can go with the documentation um so maybe uh, I'm not sure if we can make like a polling or something uh, for this um but um, yeah um, idea there yeah what if, I, I'd like I if the documentation had like a community notes kind of thing like when i learn something about highs i'm not don't quite have the confidence to go in and you know rewrite what's there but like a community notes thing where people can add you know kind of like an experience and a place where where you can add uh links that are not exactly in the documentation. And the other thing is, is, is if the documentation could be made searchable by word. So right now, unless you have manually said this keyword is searchable, uh, you can't find something. And it would be great mm -hmm. if you could, it would just find all the instances of, you know, uh, a word. And the other thing about the community notes is, is that if I write something that's wrong, someone can come and say, oh, that's not correct. And it can sort of be crowdsourced into becoming the correct uh, documentation without anyone taking on the responsibility of it being, you know, correct. What about a wiki? It sounds sort of wiki-ish what you're describing. Sure. However. Yeah, it, it's, that's, that, it's that space, isn't it, between the forum where if you, if you can get the search to work properly on the forum, and that's a complete other subject. But if you can get it to work properly, then you can find the answer. But generally speaking, it's either hidden in the forum or it's hidden in the documentation. So it's just that middle ground where, where it'd be quite useful yeah. to yeah. have something like that. Yeah. Especially if it's an optimization, because I've experienced a lot of things in highs where something wasn't working logically. And the answer was because it was either a specific way that highs does things or an optimization. But because the result wasn't obvious, like when the uh, default preset was loading before in it, or when like you incremented that that broadcaster because there was an edge case where the preset loading post callback didn't always execute in the right space. But I I won't know where to search for an answer because what's happening uh, doesn't make sense to me, and and maybe that's another. Actually, I have no idea what the answer to that is. I don't know if anyone else experiences uh, that. Uh, I mean, about like, like fixing it, uh, like right away. What what can you do? I know that like doing uh, a complex doc is complex. Like it's, it takes a lot of time, but I think the the fast way to do is is, is you just have more examples. So like the snippet parts is is pretty awesome. They we have like new new stuff, but is still lacking you know there's a lot of stuff that's like talked about on the the forum or on the documentation but i i i, I can't see like to grasp how it actually works like what what is it and like when i i, I just try, try to to dig it and like try to do stuff and it works and, and it's like oh that's an awesome feature but i didn't even know like how that worked right like recently i got into the the, the thing about sending data on slots right i don't know how it's called but like i mean i i by reading the documentation 
it's kind of clear, but it, it's, it's kind of like uh, expecting you to know how it works. But if I read the documentation, I don't know how it works. But like when I try to do it and try to grasp it and read the documentation again, I, I see, okay, that, that makes sense what is written. But like for, for beginners, like to just read the documentation, try to understand it, it's not obvious, you know? Mm. And there is like a, a lot of stuff that I don't know, like, because like everyone here is like, in the community, right? So like they get the, the idea that everyone knows about the new stuff. Like I give an example, I saw the new installer for the v, VCSL project, right? So it's trying to do a, mm -hmm. a, a default installer with the tab and stuff. And like I was reading through it on the forum and okay, so like it's a new installer. So I get into the GitHub project, I, I install the project. Nice. Okay, let, let me try to do it on my project. Uh, okay, so you have to use the, there's like the name of the, the project, right? It's, it's like a new project. And like, it, it seems kind of obvious, like to, to people who are working with highs, especially, especially to Christoph, that you, okay, you have a new project, you have to compile this project to use as a, a, a like a, a builder for your installer. But like, it wasn't written anywhere that it's like a new project. So I have to figure out, okay, it is like the highest project and there's the tools and there's like a project that I need to compile how I did with highs. So it's like, it's, it's, it's kind of like interesting to me because it's like, it's like a puzzle. I have to try to figure stuff out, but like for people who are just trying to get stuff done, it's pretty like annoying, you know, this kind of stuff. And mm. like, there's a lot of like crazy, awesome stuff like, like this, like this installer. It's crazy how it's. It's good, you know, and I, but I didn't even know it existed. I had to to like look into stuff up to know how it existed, you know. Yeah, but I, uh, just to jump to my own defense uh, on this particular thing, like the install is really, really new, and um, it's something that I've been working on for the last months or so, and I don't think that it's ready to be used by other people. Um, so I, I went the extra miles of hiding it. Uh, so you you have to really engage your puzzle skills uh, in order to use it. Um, but um, I, I totally feel you uh, when it comes to stuff that that you don't know is there and then you discover it and you think, oh my God, why I wasted hours of my life you using like uh, the, the wrong tool for the job. Um, but, but is that the thing, Christoph, that what, what that where we end up all nice people, like you were saying before, we're all nice people in this forum because we, we are prepared to make that jump. And so if you keep taking those away, those, those cognitive hiccups out of the way, then we end up with this really easy to use thing that comes to mass tool for the self important um, people who just want to whine all the time. Mm. Yeah. Maybe it's good that it's like this. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, tough, are you saying purposely keep us, it difficult? It's... Sorry? Are you saying suggesting of purposely keeping it difficult to learn about? Or I'm not I'm not quite sure what you're what you're saying. Actually we had this kind of this that, discussion at, at some point in some forums where people have been complaining about um on VI control. Um I think David had also some fun in that discussion. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> David so and I basically, my, my, my perspective on this thing is uh, uh, whenever I whenever I see like an like an uprising or like an uptick in like new highest users that uh, have been swept over by some new YouTube video or some some other event, um, then like the forum gets flooded with this lots of really new people um which i know compile highs yeah yeah but i also know that they, they won't be there like two months from yeah. the from yeah. here so um it's uh, on the other hand um i definitely don't want people not to use highs i, I mean that that would be like a suicide for a platform um but uh, like the, the the primary goal shouldn't be like making the entry to this platform as easy as possible because the entry is already easy um, in the sense that it's open source and free and you can use it. So um, basically um, that that has for, for quite some time has been like my, my philosophy for this that you have to put in a little bit of work um, to, to get the set, set up up and running. 
because then you invest it into the platform and you really want to to get that plug in so because if that's like a one click solution then you install it use it and then you deinstall it um so i don't see that anybody um or i'm i'm not sure whether this like increases the the amount of of really good people using highs but i'm i'm happy to be proven otherwise if you have another opinion about this just natural selection it, it's just mm. big, and it's probably a good thing yeah but yeah. How do you, how I, I, I get i get to where you're coming from because like i i also do like some web stuff like front-end development right and like these tools are like so overused it i can literally like i i want to do something i can just look for the exact thing i want to do on youtube and there's like a bunch of tutorials of guides doing exactly what i want but on the case of highs it was interesting because like i wanted to do something but no one else like basically we have like david videos the documentation which is like sparse in the forum and that's it like go ahead and try to do it like you have to learn it somehow so like it's it's kind of engaging to me but i i like i know how, how it can be like frustrating for like people who just want to do like a instrument and see if that that platform works for them like mm -hmm. if, if oh okay i want to do like instrument let me try contact uh SFZ, whatever, you can just find a video on YouTube of a guy doing it and you can like re, uh, replicate it and see if it works for you. For you, But in the case of highs, okay, you're gonna have like looking through David videos and it's, it can be like an old video. So like you have to figure something out. So like there's like really like a gate, a, a, a barrier to enter. But if you like go past it, it's worth it. But like most people don't know that it's worth it. So, right. I've, yeah. I, I've run into an issue where I can't find it. I'll ask a question and nobody knows the answer to it. And then that'll be the end of the plugin. I've had two plugins where that just, it died because I just couldn't get past, well, how do you do this? And I think that that is a, a, a serious um, problem. And I don't think I'm the only person that that's happened to. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's been that dramatic, but there are times when, you know, you you got to know something and, 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 you know, if you're on other platforms, that that's usually not a problem. What do we do in, in those, in those situations? If, if there is any, any way to, to address that. I think you just keep banging on about it on the forum. That's my technique. Well, but I some mean, things, that, that's, some things some, that don't work. So you go. Yeah. Well, there's some things that I think um, maybe you just can't do. Um, uh, the highs obviously has its limitations, uh, so there's, there's going to be things where you run into something and it's not nobody's done it yet. So maybe it's something that you need to nag Christoph about to add. Or what I've seen a lot of people do is they're going at a problem from one direction and they run into a wall, so they give up. But if they came to it from a different direction, they'd actually have a solution. There was something like this recently on the forum, I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, I think it was to do with MIDI outs or something. But um, basically, I suggested a completely different approach. And um, the uh, forum member, he was a bit resistant to it at first. And then the thread just died for a couple of days. And then he came back and said he'd try this other approach. And that was the solution. So sometimes it's not highs that needs to change. It's your approach to the problem. But other times, it is highs. Well, yeah, I mean, I, some of, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're a beginner, sure. But I mean, if you're an experienced software engineer we, we know what we need to know no well i i've had issues as well with it um uh like at the moment i've got this problem with sample maps uh trying to reduce the number of uh, monoliths i'm creating oh and yeah, like yeah three different that. approaches and some of them don't work some of them do work so it's just sort of choosing the approach that is going to give me the best result uh with the least headaches I don't the other approaches too. that I don't know about. Mm. And referencing Juice, their, their form a lot too will help since this is all based on Juice. I find that stuff that maybe isn't covered in the forum, uh, people have already done in, in Juice, and then you can find a way to, to implement or have Christoph implement for you. Mm -hmm. Essentially, um, what I do if, it, if it's broken and I can't get it to work and I can't find a way to do it, I basically 
um, become really annoying to Christoph by constantly asking for it to be. Well, yeah, but I mean, you're until, until you're a special there. you're a special case. I mean, you deserve. I mean, like I would help you move. You know, I mean, you're. Yeah, but that's true. Of, that's true of all of every everybody who's on this call, right? Okay. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, but uh, like, uh, there's no, I don't think I, uh, there's anything special about any individual on here, apart from maybe a couple of people who, who one of who built it and one of who spends most of his time pe training people how to use it. But um, beyond that, all of us just bang on and on and on and on until Christoph says, "Go away, I'm not doing it," or "Go, here's a new version with it done." Mm. Yeah, yeah, obviously. And I, I mean, I'm trying to kind of um, prioritize um, the, the, the requests based on uh, not only based on the persistence of the of the requester. Um, so but I also like I, I mean, that's an interesting point what you say, Bill, because like uh, there's like these problems that like people have uh, when they're starting out with a highs um, and then now problems which really people have in their day to day work with highs and I'm like my priority is always to fix the the problems for the, for the day to day people because that's where where the where the frustrations really settles in if you if you say something like you 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 had to like kill some project because you hit it that end that's like really a lot of time that you have invested into the uh, into uh, the project which uh, now goes away so um and this is a, a far more critical uh, thing for me than uh, uh, when i hear feedback of people who downloaded has played around with it for 20 minutes and then went on nec next on uh, on to the next thing because they couldn't get a grasp on it um uh but yeah, um, I think in this case it would be uh, you. Uh, you could have uh, learned a little bit from Linton's um, Linton's Linton's nagging way, um, because I'm sure that uh, the, the your your questions just got buried in the forum uh, um, uh, next to next to the noise. Um, um, but um, maybe uh, I see we have like a a, a few new people here. Um, Basically, we, we made an introductionary round at the beginning, and every time every uh, someone joins, uh, we'll ask him to introduce himself. So maybe we can do it with you, Matthew, and more for us. Maybe Matthew, you want to yeah. start? Yeah, sure. Hey, Matthew. Hey. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, that's uh, that's uh, actually good because I can I can link everything uh, what you just said because so I I started programming. Um, Five six years ago, I started on contact and discovered eyes, and I thought, yeah, that's that's the thing because contact is limited. You know, I I won't go into the details, etc. Um, but I think um, eyes is not a really beginner friendly in a way if you don't have any uh, programming background or at least any interest. In the field, you can be stuck uh, at first, as you say, as, as you said, Christophe. Uh, you play with it twenty minutes, and you say, "I, I can't do it. I can't do it, anything with it." But uh, from my perspective, and thanks to David's videos, uh, which helped me a lot, uh, but you can, I think, easily um, start building projects. And uh, sometimes you hit a wall, you break it, uh, you spend some time, uh, you search the forum, and it's it's um, I don't know the world. Uh, you are thankful because you are um, you're going to the next level. So you you keep uh, improving your skills. And about the documentation, yes, I think. Uh, in my opinion, more examples would be useful. Uh, I asked a question uh, yesterday, I think, on the forum about the macro handler. Uh, there was information, but no example, so I didn't know how to format the data. So it's just an example, but um, more often than not, you are finding your answer on the forum. And you, my experience with uh, with highs is um, every day I'm breaking walls after walls, but 
in the end, I'm improving my skills. So, so I can't remember what, what, what we were talking about, but maybe sometimes I did, it didn't happen to me, but maybe sometimes you end up in a, in a dead end. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's another solution as David says, but that didn't happen to me yet. But uh, all in all, I'm very glad to be part of this, even if if I'm not very uh, active on the forum these days, but uh, I'm quite loving it. And I wouldn't be here uh, if if that was uh, if 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 it weren't for highs, I wouldn't be a beginner programmer still. <laughs> but yeah, that's. That's my opinion about about that. Thank you, Christophe, for making highs. <laughs> That's a great a great job. Thanks. Um, okay, cool. Uh, then Morphos, um, want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi. Um, so sorry for joining late. I just couldn't get my camera and my microphone to work properly, but now it's fine. Um, I'm Morphos. Most of you might know me from the forum as well, and I started using highs like two weeks ago as an absolute bloody beginner. I had no clue what I was doing. And thanks to David's tutorials, thanks to Dan Heisenberg and, and Christoph, obviously, I actually made in two weeks a, a really, really cool sounding software synthesizer, which really pushed me to pursue DSP programming. And now I, I hit a bit of a wall and I'm trying to find through this and trying to get it working but i i made the big mistake starting on the develop branch uh, christoph you recommended this to me because there were a couple of new features i wanted to use a and, uh, idea. yeah dan pointed out to me i was starting with like the hardest things to do like i'm i'm uh, trying to learn faust at the moment mm. and yeah. Like the, the, learn fast, the, the pinnacle of things you shouldn't do when you when you really when you're a beginner. But I, I have to say this, and this is important to me. It's been an incredibly steep learning curve. It's been absolutely amazing. The the support I got from the forum is unmatched in any projects. I, I mean I'm a music producer, I have to handle the, like gear or special things and, and there's supports and, and internet forums where you, where you can turn to if you need um, help but like the highs forum is outstanding the the community the, the the way you guys are there for each other this is this is really important to me to point out this is a one one of a kind thing and yeah that, that's what keeps me going even though i i hit a bit of a wall because like at the moment stuff just won't compile but there's obviously there's a problem with the actual the 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 the, the current version uh, yeah dan imposed on me to to keep going and not give up agreed <laughs> so um, i just want to one second though 15 minutes uh we got remaining uh, oh, okay go yeah then yeah that, that that's about what i wanted to say so th thank you to all of you for this incredible journey of becoming a, a software audio software developer, I, I did um, I did a couple of arcade games. I do Game Boy games and and stuff like that. But audio and DSP program has always been a mystery to me, and now that that completely changed thanks to you guys. <laughs> nice, nice to hear. So okay. This is, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> But now that means we have to speed run uh, through the through the other roadmap requests. Um, What's the issue with fifteen minutes? Is that when the call ends or something? Yeah, I mean, you, I, you can I mean, start I can... again. They're like the, there's just no, like no, a... it's not. It's not that. I I just that that's how much I'd, I'd scheduled. I mean, we can keep going, uh -huh. but I, I find uh, it's up to you guys. I find it's usually better to just schedule another one than to just sort of keep one thing going until you know we're. You know, it's a, it, we're exhausted, you know, like the end of a party, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh, my good is, 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 is to just do this again. Uh, but I'll leave that up to you. I can, I can, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, actually, I, I already already said uh, it, it's kind of ridiculous that it took so long that we kind of started this. Uh, but maybe we can make it like a tradition where I try to do it uh, with every release that I put to the master branch. So <laughs> it might be like um, actually the build failed, uh, so I have to um, I have a funny night with my build server in front of me. Um, Welcome so, to my world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I might have built highs like um, I don't want to lie, but it's been hundred times over the mm. past few days. Yeah, I was so happy when I finally took, got it to work with with Faust mm. and Perfetto. <laughs> I got a, a a quick question for for everyone, just based on the the feedback that I've been hearing. Um, would it be and but also. Uh, Going you know, back to what you said, Chris, about not, because I see what you mean about not making it too easy to get started because then the forum, David, you were saying just gets clouded with, you know, how do I compile? I would be happy to do like a monthly uh, Zoom thing for new people. Uh, there's a college professor in, in music tech. I, it's a regular, you know, uh, thing for me and, and I'd be uh, happy to do that if you all think that that would make the experience generally better or maybe that would just again flood flood it with um you know people who should be filtered out by a, a darwinian process they're, they're what, they're what never do you guys think for, they're never going to wait for your video every month they're just going to uh, well, not yeah. a video is a live uh what, i think if people whatever. want that they'd seek you out um I, i've had this i've had a few people just send me a message say please can you show me and i'll just get in a call with them one-on-one -on -one, but you have to do it when they want it um, uh, people, like, I think it's what Lyndon's saying. They're not going to, if somebody discovers highs and say, I want to use highs now, they're not going to say, Oh, well, I'm going to wait till the live stream at the end of the month before I can start. Yeah, yeah exactly. Dave, if, right, if, like if the, the thing is that a barrier, like if someone is like just trying to, to see if that's for me, like I know, I know that I, I like this, but like if someone introduces me to highs, okay, I, I, it didn't work. Okay, so I have to wait for a guy to do like a call for it to work so you can see if you like it or not. Like people just want to see if they like it or not, and then they're going to like engage in other stuff, right? Yeah, sure. But back to Christoph's point, which I want to disagree with him entirely about uh, uh, that we wait for some sort of release schedule that he's on. I, I think this this meeting doesn't belong to him. This belongs to us. So I think we should have it as often as we like, right? Um, because I think there's a truckload of things to talk about that have got really very little fact to do with highs. They're to do with how do you do releases? When do you do releases? Who are your distributors? How do you do advertising? What, how do you do marketing? Um, they're just things that are off the top of my head right now. I'm sure there's a truckload more things that we can all talk about in this this sort of get together. I know Dave and I have had one-on-one -on -one conversations that have gone on for a fairly large amount of time discussing um, how do you deal with customers who say this to you? Uh, how do you deal with customers who say yeah. stuff to you, which you your instant reaction is to say, why don't you just go screw yourself? But um, uh, you know, there's a truckload of things that we can talk about um, that are, are on top of just talking about the technical issues involved in high. So I think we should definitely do this every month at least that's a good idea be happy in. to host it okay i'm happy to not uh do coalescate with the release schedule and just like crank out <laughs> updates every year so no pressure on you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. takes, it takes the release i mean you had the chance and you blew it but um, <laughs> now you're getting like a new high uh, master version every three years now that's so. that's fine i'm all right with that I want all those the, those point releases in between, by the way. No mm. one will use on the master branch anyways. <laughs> yeah, well, the master branch is the, the one that people can download as a pre-compiled version. So um, basically, I, I, sometimes if it's like more than two years old, it's basically like a time travel um, thing. So yeah. and um, but yeah, obviously, everybody that's really working with Heist is using the de development branch. Um, I just place a time bomb in in the master branch and <laughs> <laughs> i i have a i, I kind of with bill I, I have to agree it'd be nice to have um uh, like at least once in a while we do almost like show and tell or some workshops just 
on certain techniques or a certain thing like optimization, how to set up a shop, like all these, all these kinds of things. And we could just have a board and, and you know, one of us takes a turn with, with certain things just, just for like mm. even 15 minutes. Sounds the you know, and tell sounds good, pain, but yeah. it, would, it would help to kind of like keep things moving. And, and also kind of like, I'm sure we all have our own specialties. Like for me, for example, I'm all about recording and, and, and capturing stuff. And I know Melody, actually, she's like, a, she's become this insane master of optimizing a uh, high script. So like things like that could be, you know, we could, we could chat about, for example, or sure, sure sounds you good. Know, there's a million things, you know, and even if it was 15, 20 minutes, I think it'd make a difference actually. And I think we'd all be interested. Does every month sound good for that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I don't think 15 or 20 I, I minutes would be long enough unless we sort yeah, of schedule, we should say schedule. one person has this month and one person has next yeah. month. I think if I, we're going to do a few think, each month, we'll I need think, more time. I, I think the, the reality is we should do this generalized <clears throat> shooting the breeze thing. I'm losing my voice now. <clears throat> shooting the breeze thing every month. And then if we have some specialized thing that we want to do at a different time, that's 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 fine. Okay. Should we have a unified uh, calendar for this? Okay. Okay, formal. I think I think we'd have to have have like a mm -hmm. a, a sign up thing um, for that. Um, sorry, I'll have to think about that and and get back to you guys, and you can decide on on a couple of options that I'll, I'll give you guys. Yeah, like the next few months will be like a little a little bit uh, difficult for me because I'm doing another theater production starting in two weeks. Um, so I have to be a little bit more flexible. But after that, like. Uh, starting january or february i'm i'm good with like a fixed schedule for this um so yeah but on the other hand i i think we can also like use the highest forum for sc scheduling this stuff and if yeah somebody has like the urge or i think now it's uh it would be great to to have another chat then we can do another forum post and uh, we see uh, who wants to join um i would c try to avoid making this like a like a, um something that you have to do and then it's on oh, no, not the highest guys again um so um but yeah D D david if you offer one-on-one -on -one coachings i'll hold you up for it i'll even pay you to do it on your time because <laughs> i really want to learn this thing <laughs> yeah well i've done one-on-one -on -one with quite a few of you guys i think actually mm -hmm. um but what i've thought about doing is because I get a lot of beginners and people have been using it just a couple of weeks, I thought maybe it'd be good to do more of a group session where yeah, all sure. the beginner questions come in at once. Um, a bit like what um, Bill was talking about. Yeah. And well, I'm, great I'm happy to always uh, host this on, on the Zoom Pro account. Uh, whenever you guys do something, I'm happy to... Maybe it'll be easier if just there's one person who will always post it if that would be helpful sure do, do you guys use anything like discord or something like group chat whatever or there is i a mean group I, chat. I saw i saw a post about the discord group but it didn't work so i don't know if it yeah it, i think it's like it. i think it's died it was there i don't um i popped in every now and again but i don't like discord as much because it loses the the stuff on the forum stays yeah. whereas mm. the discord stuff is more sort of a he really just disappears in the chat, which is good for general chit chat. But if you want any sort of more tech support, I think it's good if we have this repository on the uh, forum of all the questions that have been asked. Yeah, I mean, I think like like for for meeting purposes, like to to schedule meetings, like something quicker, like Discord is is better. Like and just people who want to go to the meeting go to Discord. People on the forum don't have to do it, right? Yeah, for like more like a general chat or something like this, so we don't spam all the. I have to create all. Oh the, yeah, yeah. The forum to schedule a meeting or something. Okay. Yeah, so we, if I think that's a if if it's sort of an impromptu thing, then yeah, that makes sense. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that we got about seven minutes uh, left. I'll turn this back to you, Chris. Chris yeah, maybe um, we can. Uh... I see that then then H joined with video, so maybe then, you can introduce yourself too. Um, I'm happy to stay longer as well. Yeah, me too. Or, uh, I mean, me for, uh, yeah, I mean, okay. 
Can we keep it going? Can we extend right. the session or do we have to join another one? No, 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 no. Uh, now I got it, Bill. You got a pro account, right? Because the one hour limit is just for the free one. Yeah, fine. That's, the, that's the, pro, the pro account offers a bunch of stuff for people who missed it. Uh, you, you can cure, you can query an AI about what was talked about and, and, and that kind of thing, which which may be for some people. Okay, then you'll then, go. Then, then uh, no, no. <laughs> uh, what do you want me to say? What do you, what do you want to know? So basically, everybody just says who he is, uh, what he is doing with Heiss, and uh, if the time allows it, what he wants to see where Heiss uh, is developing. Uh, okay, so I'm Dan. Uh, I run DH Plugins, uh, which is a company I set up. Uh, shortly after releasing my first plugin, Halo, which was a, a synth sampler um, <clears throat> kind of hybrid thing, uh, primarily for making drum and bass music. So I've been a drum and bass DJ for 20 odd years. Um, and during COVID, when we were all sitting around with nothing to do, we were doing kind of making presets as a kind of side hustle, serum presets and those kind of things, the virus TI. And I just wanted to put put all of those kind of massive or everything that we were doing in one place and I thought it's 2020 surely there's got to be some accessible way of creating some kind of sample instrument and I somehow stumbled upon highs through a kind of google search and yeah got onto it very quickly lots of help from Christoph and Dave and Lyndon um, and yeah so I've got three plugins under my belt now um, where do I want highs to go I don't know. I mean, it's 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 almost kind of where I want it to be at the moment. Um, uh, without getting too technical, I, I feel like <clears throat> the modulation options could be better. But <clears throat> honestly, that's probably like a lacking on my part that I don't understand what I can do. My my scripting is terrible. I don't understand DSP that well. But uh, honestly, if you put, if you put your head down and ask as many stupid questions as you can you do eventually get there um like the forum is amazing i think as people said earlier uh, people are, are willing to help so i do encourage people not to give up um i can't remember who was who was you know using faust in his first attempt with highs and you know it's brave <laughs> i commend them. um and you know it's 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 sad to have got that far and put that much time into it and then think oh, i've had enough but you know, i can completely sympathize with how stressful uh this thing can be because if you're not christoph you don't really understand what's going. A bit of a fall out there but I, i'll get through it <laughs> yeah. i'll stick with it and i'll continue yeah i mean I, I wish i could help you but i barely understand it myself you know sure we're gonna get it working good 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 you will Trust me. Thanks. Also nice to meet you. I think you've been also one of the longest, longest members in the highest forum. Um, yeah, I think so. It's it's kind of strange because uh, I you know, I felt like such a newcomer and that was <laughs> four years ago. And uh, I, 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 I wish I could help out more, but I, I genuinely don't know the answers to most of the questions myself. So <laughs> I, kind of, I, I do what I can. Yeah, but actually, that that uh, brings me to a to an idea of uh, like maybe um, is there like an uh, like a desire of of you to like contribute to the documentation or to the snippet examples? Uh, so, can I do anything to make that path uh, or like the entry uh, easier? Um, because I, I we we have this. I think we discussed this earlier, and then the, this point got swept under the the rug. But um, so I think somebody said that he didn't want to contribute because he didn't know whether this is true or not. That um, was Bill, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. And on on this subject, I would say if it's not true, then I will correct it before it will get put into the official documentation. But um. Once it's there, it's better than nothing. Um, and it's certainly better than me typing uh, chunk into chat GPT and uh, then interpreting that output. Uh, so um, that would explain a lot. I will just encourage you that <laughs> if this is something holding you back from contributing to the, to, to the documentation, then don't. Um, uh, and because I can imagine that also, like, I mean, 
I wrote the, uh, this, uh, I developed, created this entire platform um, because I wanted to use it, but I'm also just one one guy, and like, there's also so so uh, so many things that you can do in one day, um, and I can imagine that um, there are also, especially um, I think Joe uh, Joao, you brought up that point that like you have to read the documentation twice or three times before you really understand it. But that's because I, with my nerdy tech brain, uh, want to just uh, compress all the information that's available into this uh, into this uh, text. Um, so maybe that would be even better if somebody with like a lesser knowledge of the inner workings start start with this stuff, and then I can still join in. And like, uh, if something is technically not right, then I will correct it. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Because actually, uh, as I study, I'm actually like trying to do my own docs. So like when I, I figure something out, I just write it to myself to understand it later. So like, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe there's like a story point, like to, to see how to write this for like a beginner because I am a beginner. So, right. Mm -hmm. I think the and high, like, no, no, the, the, the high snippet, the snippet thing, the, the new example thing and the, it, it is, is a giant leap forward. The more we all contribute to, 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 to snippets, the mm. better. Partly, yeah, because, I mean, I, I, um, partly because, mean... because Christoph, sadly for you, you, your your coding is so efficient that we look at. I look at your code and I go, and I've been looking at code for a lot of years, and I look at your code and go, "What's he doing?" I don't, and then I have to spend a fair amount of time looking at it. Going, oh wow, that's a massively efficient way to do that. I wouldn't do it that way. I do it. Uh, you're doing stuff in two lines that I'm doing in ten or fifteen. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's partly the code is, is frankly so good that, uh, that uh, uh, it's a struggle for, for certainly me to actually understand what the hell's going on. So some uh, worse written code would possibly be a, a good thing. One, one suggestion could be to link to uh, specific snippets inside the, the, the docs. So... Mm -hmm. Although you do provide examples, you can't really copy and paste that into highs without sort of creating a bunch of sliders or whatever you need to to actually get. There the are some snippets. So it would be quite good to have that uh, alongside as well. Because mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I find I need to look at a project or the code doing the thing before I really understand what's going on. And mm -hmm. I do struggle with the documentation I, I actually I don't use it that much. I just prefer to head to the forum and try and find a proper snippet that I can import and just spend a you know half an hour just figuring out what each line does. Yeah, I mean, I... One, one of the, the ways that I'm trying to learn is going to the forum and like just searching for like uh, high snippets and like random rise snippets and just take them and see what they do. Okay, that's interesting for me. Let's let's read this. But well, that's not interesting. Whatever. But like, if the documentation was was like this, like uh, snippet oriented, I can just like, okay, what what is this? Let me see what it's doing and see mm -hmm. the snippet working. Okay, that's interesting for me. Let's dive into this, right? I spent the first three years looking at the documentation in exactly that way, just walking through the documentation and looking at something and going, what does that do? Oh wow, it can do that. All right, that's cool. And moving just literally alphabetically through the documentation to do that to find out what it was doing. It's cool. But yeah, snippets would be a, a cool way to do that. One problem I have trying to contribute to the docs is there's some parts of it that I, I'm not sure where they're generated, if if it's generated in the code, but I haven't mm. found a file on GitHub where I can just edit the text. I, I have no um, idea. I don't know. Yeah, some of it is just a text file on GitHub and just edit that, well, a, a Macdown file. But other bits, I'm not sure where it's coming from, so I don't know how to add an example or how to edit it. I, I <laughs> ran into the same problem. I, it, it... I tried to add some stuff. I find myself struggling to find very simple things like working on text justification. And then I find out after 15 minutes, it doesn't work because I'm spelling centered wrong. So if thing, if I could add things like that to the, the documentation, that would help. But mm -hmm. like that section is part of an index HTML file. I have, I have no idea where that is to edit or to contribute to that part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. I think the problem is with this system that I try to combine like auto-generated stuff with like 
with uh, with content that uh, that you type in because i i try to avoid like making these kind of lists uh, or like listing the properties manually um because this gets depreciated so fast uh, um but on the other hand it's really hard for for a beginner to to find this the spot where he can make the edits um so maybe i can um, on the other hand, I, I can imagine that this could be like a one one on one session um, where I can just show you where to edit this, um, because I, I don't think we are talking about a big, uh, about a big target audience here um, yeah. regarding people who actually want to contribute. Uh, this will be like a, a few, maybe five or six uh, of you who are really uh, are eager to, to contribute and I'm happy to like really work with you one on one to set up the workflow and um, because it's really um it's it's even harder to uh, than working with highs uh, to write the documentation for highs which is a little, little bit uh too bad now now that i speak it out um but yeah so basically um maybe i can try to make that process uh, first of all a little bit more streamlined and then uh, once if you want really want to contribute uh, just hit me up and then we go through the system so i can set you up with this, this yeah that uh, sounds good how it works yeah, yeah. All right but um, uh, am i right understanding like from the general uh, feedback that you would like to emphasize the documentation more on the snippet part than on the actually reference manual thing uh, I don't know. I'm for, for referencing. Yeah, I think snippets in the manual. So you can read about oh, an array clone function, and then you've got a snippet to demonstrate that function. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, there's really no substitute for knowing the theory. Mm -hmm. you know, there's some discussions that you have, Christoph, that at like sort of a deep level of what's going on that are incredibly helpful. Um, and if you, I, if you haven't read them, uh, read them. You know, there's like a best practices section and there's some other things that mm -hmm. might look like uh, I'm not going to get anything out of that. But you read it and it's like, oh. Mm -hmm. OK, that brings me to like another thing uh, that we uh, that. So basically we have like examples, then we have the reference and then we have like the organization of the documentation, which is how can I see um, and how can I link stuff and how can I easily find stuff? Um, so that would be like another thing that you, uh, but I think for this, for this subject, I'm heavily relying on your feedback because um, I don't know, uh, it, it's really hard for me to, uh, to see what is hard to find or not because I know where it is. And also I like kind of, I'm, I'm the only person who likes the search functions of the docs. I hate the forum search. Um, uh, but for me, the documentation search works perfectly. And every time somebody asks, it's not in the docs. I, I just type in the, the, the exact keyword and it uh, sends me onto this page. And so I'm kind of, what is, what's everybody talking about? But uh, it's because I you have really, the keywords. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. sure, but, 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 the keywords are. Because so, it's not looking at like the content; it's just looking for the keyword. So, like, if you don't have the keyword in your mind, you, you are going to find it. What to search basically. for? Yeah, because yeah. you don't know where the problem is. Like, I literally, yeah. I, I, so some places I, I was in like in the page, with the content I wanted, and like I just like copied the 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 word that was on the content of the docs and tried to look for it, and there was like no results. So, like, what mm -hmm. I, I actually look at this right now. So, why isn't showing up? I'm not sure. I'm, uh... David, maybe you can you search in the in the GitHub repository for uh, content in the text. That would be like one. one yeah, that would be, yeah, that's be that's what I, what I do. Yeah, yeah. Basically, because in the, the like direct on the docs, it doesn't work like just keywords. So I have to go to GitHub to look for mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I wanted to just say one one offer one thing about the snippets, which is that I understand it's very useful for some people. But that's only if you're doing common things. There was, I think, a total of one snippet that was was helpful to me, and everything else is I'm just doing other stuff. And having it, the ideas fundamentally explained can also remove the need for as many snippets because if you understand how to do it, you can do you know your thing. And so I think maybe a balance be, between the two. 
yeah, yeah sure. I, I, I get where, where you're coming from. I, I, I know that like if you get the the understandings, the basics, you can do whatever you want, right? But like, like when you are trying to learn something and just like once you see it working, like so, so, so that's what it is. Okay, let's let me uh, uh, understand how how it's working. But like first of all, you need to know what 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 is it. I'm gonna have the example again, like the the the, the thing about slots. Like I read through the documentation, it seems like pretty useful, and yeah, like, let me see how it works. But like I couldn't like get a like a basic project of it working, and then I went to the snippets and I found the snippets of it, and it was like perfect. Okay, that's what it, it does. So like I'm like, just gonna read to know how I can adapt to, to my project. So what we're discussing here is the classic educational problem, is that some people learn in a particular way i.e by looking at examples of things and other people learn in other ways by looking at theoretical discussions of things both of them are valid ways of learning there are loads of valid ways of learning but so the problem the documentation has is it needs to try and cater for different learning approaches that people have so i think bill's right and i think oh you're right too they're both both of you are correct about the way the thing uh, should work. It should work in both those ways. Uh, and it, it, so my my suggestion would be yeah, throw everything at it, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now, now that's a huge, enormous, massive sort of like you know prospect. But don't th you don't have to throw everything at it day one. So uh, like Dave says, we could add some snippets into the documentation <clears> that stands right now. As you say, Christoph, we could have a better way of discussing uh, a, a, a discussion about the better way that we could all contribute to the actual text documentation. Uh, we could also have some better search technology as well involved. Uh, uh, and all of those things would be useful. But so what, what I don't think we should do is sort of like throw our hands in the air and say, oh, it's all too hard. We should just do each of those things when it occurs to us that we can do it. We should just, because each of them is a step forward for a, a group of people, not for everybody, but for a group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. But, but I, I, I mean, I, I just wanted to know whether there's like a direction that, that, or if there's like a general consensus about like a direction of, uh, whether the documentation skews into one or the other extreme uh, or but so if i understand it correctly it's basically the correct the directions right but just more of more of everything right <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah i think the technical stuff is also better for stuff bill's talking about is people who know what they want to do um and kind of have an idea about it people more experienced basically and then for beginners snippets are really helpful because then you can visualize and go right that yes that is the thing i want because you don't necessarily know that the thing you're reading about is the thing you want but if you see it doing the thing then you go right yeah that, that is what i'm after or it's not what i'm after and then you can progress a bit more quickly so you go okay that's what it that's what i want now i'll read out about how it actually works and what it's doing mm-hmm I, I also have an, an, like a more like direct example it's not just about like learning stuff with snippets. I have an example of like the time stretching uh, uh, docs that you have like the non quarters uh, property, right? And basically it says a property, which is a int. Okay, but like, what what does it tell me? Like, what is one non quarters, two non quarters is like, like the quarter nodes or it's not? Because I know I by a fact right now that it's not. It's like one is like one, one, and two is one, two dotted. But like nowhere in the docs it says this. You have like to to really put the code and try by yourself to get these these things. You know, like yeah, so like it, it is in the documentation, but it's hidden in the documentation. I think I, that... I, I, I just understand it when I, I took the code and tried to do stuff by my own. And, oh, that that's how it works. Yeah, it's there is a thing though where there's an infinite number of things that that people what i the snippets that i think might might be most most helpful are the things involving magic words where the 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 documentation will say describe it but you have to have very precise way of doing like um, rendering audio in midi it's a snippet i think there is very helpful for people because you can read the docs but you still 
you know, you, it's magic words. So, and there's a, there are quite a few examples in there that, that are really helpful, I think, for a lot of people because they're, they're magic words kind of thing. Uh, so that, that would be my, my suggestion there. You know what I mean by magic words? Yes. So like, just like, like the, the keywords that you have to type into the doc search to get a meaningful answer or not that it's, it's that like, even it's if like you... Jao's talking about, about, um, tempo syncing, right. Uh, is he wants it to be four, four, but when you, when you, when you assign four, four in, in, in highs, you don't write four, you have to know what all the tempo sync values are. The secret like hidden that. magic words of tempo sync. That one is if you're using standard tempo sync, one a bar long, and two is um half a bar dotted and you know stuff like that. Yeah, it's like the index from the combo box. Like yeah, yeah. The combo. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the enumeration, basically. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so I'm, my point is like in this specific example, if the non quarters property on the docs not just said, okay, it's an int, but it actually had some examples or maybe like like a table so, uh, showing, okay, one is one, one, two is whatever. So I can just look at it and see, like figure it out, you know, because like just seeing a property and seeing the, the type of it doesn't tell me a lot, a lot, you know. Mm. You have to spend your time in, in uh, GitHub to find that out. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to try to add to the documents recently with uh, text justification and stuff like that. Just certain yes. things that you have to like go look through GitHub to find what those values are. Um, and if it was easier to enter them into the documentation, like I, I'd love to do that just so I know where to find it next time. It would be great if you could edit the add to the documentation from highs using that markup editor. That that would be. Stupid. But actually, you, you can do that. So basically, that's how I'm writing the documentation. Um, right. So, so yeah, we definitely need that one-on-one -on -one session. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One-on-six, uh, on uh, maybe. Actually, I spent way too much time making this uh, process super efficient for myself. <laughs> but I forgot <laughs> to tell anybody else how to do it. Um, <laughs> So basically, it's it's really like right click edit, and then it cre auto creates the file from you with the correct link and everything. Um, and it even takes a screenshot of the module and uh, lists the parameters. So w once you you get into the zone, then it's a really nice documentation um, experience. Um, but yeah, sure. Okay, that that's good to know. Um, but there's still a problem with the um, your document the documentation of ice because you are you, you include in the documentations uh, simple things like setting uh, an attribute uh, or whatever or a value you know the knob dot set value etc you go from there to um, painting panels to script node to snacks, to have external C++ nodes. It's like you try, you, you try, you are, yeah, you're doing a good job, but there's so much to cover and there's a gap between doing basic stuff and maybe less basic stuff to, to go, um, uh, to, to then enter the C++ world. As Bill said, he's a, uh, a software engineer. He knows a lot of theoretical stuff. Uh, I don't. I want to learn, but um, this gap, it's, it's not uh, the the highest documentation is not supposed to fill this gap. You have to learn some somewhere else. I'm thinking mainly about, uh, you know, the literally the juice framework, how this, how, how it is uh, working, you know, the prepare function, the uh, process block, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not, uh, the highest documentation doesn't have to do that. And that's the problem because you, you are allowing people to do a lot of stuff, but you can't cover it all. Um, th th that's, that's perhaps a, a problem. Uh, for us who want to go to from beginner to more advanced uh, mm. programmer. 
Yeah, I think. So I don't know. Maybe I, I think that, sorry, yes. Greg, but maybe maybe put some links or or if people know things, gather the links and put them on the docs. Hmm. Sorry, Greg. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I, I just wanted to to point out that that eyes is 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 that became a beast. Like you can do so much things with it, and um, developing pl audio plugins or anything like related to development uh, software programming is so huge. You need so many skills from everywhere that it is something that you have to be. We all know that we have to be dedicated to. And so I don't think that you can absolutely learn everything from just one system, just from one software, like Hyze, one framework. And we, we I think we are all doing the same, like um, um, searching things here and there on the internet, like on other systems, I, I, I try to to learn MATLAB and to learn a, a bit of Python and and just using AI to learn things and paradigm uh, using like developing DSPs. And I think we are all trying to find stuff and I cannot cover everything. Um, so I think that what we have already is, is amazing. And what we pointed out uh, tonight is just like adding a few stuff and 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 keeping what already exists and making making better um but i don't think it is eyes christoph it, it is your, your your turn but i don't think eyes can cover everything anyway uh everything sorry um, yeah, no but, but that's i don't think that's like the intention of the documentation so basically yeah. I, I hit into this into this question whenever i'm writing the documentation for a certain script node notes Basically, when like uh, when I need to cover to explain the compressor node, I don't explain what a compressor does because I assume that people will know it or they find better resources for it. So I try to limit the 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 information in the documentation to really I know about the broad subject. How do I apply it to 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 highs? And I think this this will remain like the strategy going forward. Um, but yeah. um. Yeah, it's definitely uh, good to uh, to hear the feedback about this. Um, I can imagine, uh, like one thing that I also thought about that might be hugely useful that we can uh, also use this this format for would be some kind of user stories in the sense that um, if I can watch you work with Heist, then I really realize stuff that uh, that uh, that is missing from from your workflow. Not because you you're stupid, but because I it, am. It's not, uh, it's not shown <laughs> shown better. So there's like uh, there could be like a beneficial th thing where I tell you how to do it better, but I also know okay I need to make this more prominent uh, so people can use it because that's uh, as soon as some uh, often when I have I'm having these one on one session with people uh, when they share their screen then I'm I'm really okay you can do it like this you can do it like this and oh I didn't know that okay that's good um and Maybe this would also kind of relieve the burden on the documentation on on some kinds uh, where like the the amount of frust frustrating workflows that I don't encounter because I don't use it can be easily circumvented by just not um, by nudging the people to to use the uh, my approach or the the, the one that I intended to use. Sounds like that would work nicely that. with. Sorry, go on, Bill. Oh, I was going to say, we're, it sounds like we're talking about the last mile problem where, you know, it's just like of all the problems I've had with, with highs over three years come, came down to like 15 questions. Like if I knew the answer to those 15 questions, but, you know, the systems that are in place answered 10,000 other questions. And I think m maybe what we're all saying is like a format like this is a really good way for all of us to 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 find answers to those last mile questions. And if someone on the forum isn't willing to wait a month to do that, well, then you know, like you said, maybe it would be useful not to, you know, if if you're not willing to wait, then you know. Hmm. I, I think Everyone you're right. Here. You're right, Christoph, because I I I I'm working in highs every single day, but I get the feeling. 
that I'm not doing it the most efficient way possible. You I don't? don't <laughs> if you don't, we're, we're all in a lot of trouble. I think, I think, I think Christoph is doing it way better than I'm doing it, but I, I don't know what that secret way is. Yeah, I have to be honest, there, there, there were a few occasions, there were a few occasions where I knew, why is Linton doing it like this? And is he really doing this like this for like five years? <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's doing it the worst way possible for five years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I meant when I said uh, best practices. It'd be really good to have some sort of resource where you can kind of see how some, even some really common things in highs are meant to be done. So yeah, obviously, yeah. Uh, lots of people come into, well, at least maybe not lots of people, but some people come into highs without so much programming knowledge prior. And uh, they kind of develop their own uh, way of way of programming uh, without mm. understanding how like JavaScript works. And so you'll get these really bloated, inefficient scripts. Whereas when, of course, as mentioned, you look at uh, the snippets that you've made, you've got uh, just the best way to write things. The most efficient and the least amount of lines uh and i often find that i don't know the ways either dave has a, a patreon thing that i think has been it should be like you know right right up there on like the front of the um the highs website maybe that says if you want to learn highs there's this thing you can subscribe to because yeah. i think that really but, but i think it is isn't it like oh, maybe it is I know that when I was getting started, like everything that I needed to do, there was a video for that, mm. that uh, David done. No, but it's literally, literally one of the three uh, big topics in the resource categories uh, linked to it. Oh, okay. Okay. So, no, much. no, that's, I, that's didn't, like I a, didn't know. Brilliant. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, I mean, it's uh, the, the one resource people are using for learning high school. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've been, I've started posting these little puzzles there to try and help people sort of do programming, the programming challenges saying, okay, reduce this to the least amount of lines of code, that kind of thing, or, or write this in a different way and just see how people approach things. And I think little exercises like that are good if you can take just one function or one aspect and try and mm -hmm. rewrite it in multiple ways, because there's always many ways to do things. So when you talk about best practices, the whatever is the best practice for your particular situation might be different for another situation. So um, I think context is important because there are so many ways to do the same thing in highs and you've got to choose the way that is suitable for a particular uh, scenario, a particular situation. Um, and I think that just comes from practice and reading a lot of code, writing a lot of code and making lots of mistakes and then coming back to code that you've written years later and going, oh, I should have done it this way because now I've learned more things that I didn't know. I mean, I do that all the time. I'm always refactoring code I've written from like three or four years ago because I've learned a better way of doing it. And I mean, just one tip I learned last year is uh, don't nest, avoid nesting. Have as few levels of code as possible and your code will instantly be um, much easier to maintain and you'll write less code. Well, that, uh, so in software patterns. So it sounds like what you're talking about there is yeah. a general you know, uh, programming classes and just sort of general. Uh... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah but, but again, then we, we come into this uh, uncanny valley where uh, we same with the compressor, uh, where I'm not sure whether it's our task to, to, um, uh, yeah, it's, to it's tell not. people how to write code in general, or because there, there are really vast amount of resources for, for making that. Um, I think we need to be much more granular and um, specific. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, oh yeah, no, I wasn't suggesting that for the docs. Um, but but I, I can imagine it. For example, if um, I'm just like thinking about possible ways for for this format or or like content. Um, if somebody has like a particular problem in in his project that he's. Uh, that he thinks might be interesting, or she, sorry, Melody, that uh, that they think that, that um, would be interesting for people uh, to see, um, then we can make some kind of discussion whether that's relevant, and then he can like just present it uh, in like a screen session, and then we can talk about the best way. Then I can also see how our people, how people are That'd using this. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Um, because they, they, they've had, had has a, uh, some videos about code reviews on his, on his YouTube channel, and like I think that's like the perfect example like to get better because like if you like like Lindo said, you, you, he does something like like how he wants for like five years. If it's working, it's working. If no one mm. tells him that it's wrong, he's never gonna know. But like, yeah. if you have like someone reviewing your code, no, you can do better. It's working like this, but you can do better. That's how yeah. you actually improve, like in, in jobs in general. But if yeah, you do just like, by your own, but, but, no do this. And I, I just I would... looked myself up on on the forum. It's eight years, not five years. Ah, okay. <laughs> no, it's not twenty. I, years. I, I think Actually, the difference I, I... here is is between how do you do something as a software programmer and how do you use the language effectively. Like if if when I first started working with highs, I was a C plus plus programmer, and I started to use, try to use C plus plus as an approach in 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 highs until I finally read the section in the documentation about how you use the language effectively, and that's where I think is maybe Christoph with what you were, you were saying. Yeah, we don't want to tell people how to use compressors or which sorting algorithm is better, but there is a there is a salient question of how do you use this language that you've, mm. you've created most of them? Can, can I just say it's, uh, that I agree entirely with what you're saying, Bill, it, but it's not just about the language. It's about the IDE, the, the entire thing. It's about highs. It's, mm. I yeah, yeah, strongly yeah. get the feeling because like my biggest single instrument has 10 voices in it with essentially 10 times everything, right? So I've got a lot of widgets to draw, a lot of them in all exactly the same place. And it's taken me a lot of years to get to the point where I semi do this semi efficiently. Um, uh, and, this, and I'm pretty sure there's got to be a better way to do it than I do, because yeah. if I have to change the position of one widget in one voice, then I'm okay. Now I've got a little script I run that moves them all, right? Because it names them all correctly, but uh, like, uh, uh, for a, a lot of years, I spent spent with this thing, moving you know the volume control on on, on a voice two widgets up and uh, two two pixels up and two pixels to the left. Now I have to go do that another nine times inside. I mean that's an ob a kind of obtuse so, example, but yeah. But by a voice, do you mean um, sort of from a visual point of view? You've got like yeah. ten panels yeah, with ten exactly pages, the same set of controls. Pages, yeah, ten samplers. They're not so. Samplers. We were doing this in uh, Mandala, and I've done it in a couple of other projects. So what we do is we have one set of controls, and we store all the values in a slider pack. And then when you change panel, you just load in the stored values from the slider pack. Yeah. Oh, I, and now I almost do exactly that. I actually have a separate yeah. widget which says, OK, so you're called volume one. So therefore, go through all the ones called volume something. And if you call volume one, record the, the X and Y position. If you're not called volume one, you call volume two, three, four, five, then change yourself to match volume one. So now I move something and press this, this button on the interface and it just all changes. But um, I, didn't, I didn't do that for like six years. <laughs> six years of this painful agony of moving widgets around the interface. Right, which self-inflicted, right? <laughs> but they, so they eventually sat down one day and said, "This is just too much. I've got to do something about it." Right? And I'm pretty certain there must be a better way to do it than even I'm doing it now. But the, so that's, I guess, one obscure, obtuse example. But it's how, great, how I'm, great I'm example. using like, like that's widgets in the interface. So now, now let's talk about you know, like I want to add effects in different places. Like in so now I've got ten voices. They're all in ten. Um, synth voice things and they're all in 10 containers and I've got to multiply that 10 times and how do I do that and what, how do I change something in all 10 places all at the same time and how do I consistently do that because if, even to this day I now do um, development releases to, to the beta testers and they go oh, it's not working in voice 9 and they go look at voice 9 and go oh, yeah, you idiot you forgot to turn on the velocity modulator right you know that's just me it's dumbass stupid stuff so you know some some uh, it sounds like maybe broadcasters uh, might be helpful and, and just sort of some object oriented encapsulated techniques such that there is no functional difference between any of the um, any of the voices and you just send one well, thing and then encapsulate it inside and that way you would sure, never but, have but the reality is Bill uh, to be honest with you 
I'm a small talk programmer. Yeah, I, know small so talk. I think about everything, yeah. everything in, in terms of objects, but there is yeah. no uh, object encapsulation for- uh, That's not true though. I, I posted a code example. Um, of... There's no object, just let me finish the sentence. <laughs> object encapsulation in, inside modules that are like velocity controllers. I can't modularly add them and modularly address them in, the, in precisely that way, but yeah, you're probably right. You might want to take a look at the builder class for this. So th this would be like a you good see, example. You see precisely. Oh yeah, the factories, yeah. yeah. No, no, the builder is something where you can like programmatically like just build up the module tree. Um, so for uh, as soon as you got lots of repetitive modules, like 10 different modules, which all have a velocity modulator and a few effect slots. And precisely, you don't want to set the intensity of every single one. This is uh, you write this in the on init code and it initializes it uh, for you. Um, and it, uh, if you recompile it, it throws away all modules and uh, builds it up. So that's what, for example, uh, that's what I've been using for lots of projects where you have these uh, kind of duplicated structures. Um, but yeah. this is just like one of the examples where I could uh, really benefit from people trying uh, or explaining their problems or their annoyances with highs because most likely if if i have worked if i have went in their in their path i have found the solution for myself because i'm not putting up with that bullshit so <laughs> yeah precisely so that's so i guess my my point was let's not just talk about just the way that you write code let's talk about the way that you build instruments yeah sure i'm i'm not sure how much um uh, intellectual property I can spill because uh, because I'm working with uh, different companies for this. Um, but I can um, I can definitely show you like some general uh, general guidelines and and well, how, I, I how think it, it probably works better the other way. Like you were saying that you know one of us sits there and and does something and goes and this and this this is annoying for me and you say you mm -hmm. should use the builder class right. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's more yeah. that like you know taking each of us in turn with a problem project for ourselves and, mm. and demoing it in, in, in the way that we work with it. So how, how should we, uh, how should we um, address this? Should we kind of, uh, before every meeting, should we have some kind of discussion of who wants to present his, his problem, or his or her problem? And um, then we can kind of uh, like, make a poll of uh, which would be like the most relevant to everybody. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit yeah. like the um, Chantal thing, I think that Brian was suggesting. Sorry? So the, the idea of this, it reminds me, it's a little bit like um, the Chantal idea that Brian had. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think um, either approach where um, so just one person is scheduled to demonstrate their problem uh, but i guess if it's just something minor then maybe other people could as well and I, I also think you know maybe there are some some things that we can work out ourselves as a community and and then you know if, if we can't do that you know then we bring it to the to the the christoph section you know I, I don't know what your your time available time you know to do that kind of thing is is christoph but i think be, like if i look at all the developers that are on the screen right now you probably know, you know, 99% of the questions that, that I would have on how to do something better. Hmm. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, we, we, uh, I can't sit beyond everybody and, and tell them how to, how to, uh, use highs. And, but I, I think it would be great. Um, if there's kind of like a pre-selection before we have this session of like re maybe relevant uh, topics and uh, individual problems and then one can prepare like uh, in like an isolated example um, and uh, then we can we can st uh, start talking about this for example because for example i noticed when i was watching the video from josh about like the introduction to the c plus plus workflow it, uh, i immediately like saw a few things that i would make a little bit different and that i'm doing differently in my workflow which i uh which um i didn't want to point out like in in the but 
in some kind of direct feedback, it would be like much more direct uh, and like beneficial for both uh, parties. Um, so. All right, so we could do that like on the forum. Does that makes sense. Yeah, I think for this the forum might be might be good um, because it has like this upvoting feature where people can just like um, uh, use this as some kind of polling to to get the most relevant. Uh, can you add polls to the to forum posts? There's a proper poll system. Uh, I have to. I have to um, <laughs> get Dominic. Where is Dominic? Dominic? This. Why is Actually, Dominic not here? Um, he uh, Dominic was in India for a few months, uh, for a few weeks, uh, for yeah. doing an art project, and he came back on Friday. Um, so he has a lot of stuff to do, but he will join on the next uh, on the next session. Nice. Uh, just one thing. Uh, like I said, I'm doing like uh, like my 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 end of my course thing is going to be a high project and i definitely going to put like some stuff about christoph and dave on the on the, the thesis so like where can i get like a bio from you guys or something to put on the the, the text ask chat gpt um i think there's one on my website uh, just send me a private message on the forum and i can send you something Sure. I, I think I wrote some some bullshit biography on on the Hive website that you can. Yeah, there's a, there's a bio section. Yeah, but you have to it. scroll really, really down. It's like at, at the absolute end of the website. Oh, you mean your bio? Yeah. Yeah. Also, or, or did I did I misunderstand the question? No, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, like a, a smile, a small, like, like you, you guys, like. Maybe your education, like a small history, like where you were born and stuff like this, you know, just a small bio to put on the, the thesis. Mm -hmm. For for what purpose? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm doing like There's a, uh, yeah, yeah, for my, my university and I'm doing like a high project and I, oh, I, yeah. I, I put like a small, small, like details of high, what is it and how it was created. So I'm going to mention you guys in the forum as well. Because it's, it's basically, I, I have to put some, some bi biography of where did I learn it? How did I learn it? By looking at the forums, basically. It turned, like there's no book about it. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, can do this. Alrighty. And, uh, how are we doing on time, folks? Are we, do we want to keep going or do we feel like this is good for this session? Yeah, I, I think we've reached a good, a good point. point. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Run out of wine. Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, it's nice meeting all you guys. I really appreciate everyone popping in and, and getting to see your faces and getting to, to know more about who you guys are. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And Me nice. too. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your Thank time. You guys. Thanks, everyone. It's amazing right. it took so long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, then we just like uh, see ourselves on the high forum and we, we kind of discuss the next uh, session um, uh, date as well as like subject. Um, it would be great to start off uh, to start with this uh, kind of um, user base uh, or user story thing. Um, so uh, maybe you can just po if you have like any ideas. Um, it doesn't have to be like the master level of expertise. So, for example, Morpheus is if we really struggle with like getting Faust to compile, um, I think there's like one or two steps that you make differently than I am doing in my web um, in my workflow. Um, so, um, just uh, just like make some recommendations, and then we we discuss um, what would be the the best uh, thing to start us with. All right. Okay. All right, yeah, so, yeah, right. So, sounds good. Oh, we've missed one important thing. So are we getting we're getting a new version of Highs, right? Four point one. <laughs> Four point one. Yeah, yeah. It's um, the, but the build server um, um is is broken. Actually, the the <laughs> multi page creator did, didn't have admin rights on this on this build server. So. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, so I'm going when, to when you that release now. you you mean like you're just gonna like push it to GitHub or like you're gonna do like a a, a new like compiled version or something? Yeah, it's a compiled version um on the on the release page of GitHub. Um so yeah. Where can we find some infos about new uh, features or stuff? Uh, you have uh, assembled a list of mo the most interesting commit uh, from commits from the, from the history since 4.0. Um, and you can go from there, but uh, you can also skim like the entire commit history and uh, walk through the noise and find your relevant bits for yourself. Um, All right. Sounds good. Sounds good, guys. Uh, Christoph, can I grab you for one second uh, after this? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. All right, guys. All right. Thanks. Take okay. care. Bye bye. Talk soon. Bye bye. Thanks for hosting this, Bill. Absolutely. Bye. Thanks, Bill.